You once again stepped into the world of survival horror. Good luck. All right, welcome back, friends, to Resident <laughs> Evil 2, Leon Scenario B, Part 4, I think. That seems about right, yeah. We're going to be making some major moves in this video. This is going to be a pretty big one. I can't believe we're almost done with this game. This is going to be the last video to feature the Raccoon City Police Department. Very sad. I feel like this is like a location that I've featured many, many times on this channel. And this is the, the last time. Well, unless I finally decide to for whatever reason, replay my least favorite classic Resident Evil game, which is Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, and feature that on this channel, because you do go to the RPD in that game, but... For now, anyway, we're gonna be bidding adieu to the RPD, a game that I've featured on this channel in... Let's see, Operation Raccoon City, which is terrible, very bad game. Uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake, the other time that I played Resident Evil 2 Remake, and this game, so that's four times, at least. I might be missing one or two things, but I think that's about it. Yeah, this is, this is what I thought, uh, when I was doing Claire's story, I, I think I was thinking of this part, because... Both characters kind of do something different with this clock tower. Like, Leon's gonna do this. And we're gonna push the switch. And for Claire, I think he grabs something in here. But for Leon, we're gonna grab that. And then we're gonna jump down. Jump down the old dust chute. Can't tell you how many times I've jumped down the old dust chute. No! Get away! No! Jeez, that seems pretty bad. You should probably see a doctor about that. Giant eyeball on your shoulder. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be happening, quite frankly. Seems like something has gone awry. Ben! Can you still hear me? Come on, answer! Damn! I don't believe this. I almost got the story. Ben. <laughs> Bitter irony. The chief of police, a co conspirator. Get that scum. Make him pay. Hang in there, Ben. Leon. Hail to the chief. <laughs> I love that they make that pun. I made that pun in one of the video titles, but it's so funny. Mail to the chief. Like, it is... <laughs> it's so stupid. When, when William Birkin wrote this, did he mean that as a pun? Was he being funny when he wrote that? Or was it just an accident that it happens to sound like Hail to the Chief? I don't know. I, I, I like to think that William Birkin was just kind of a funny guy. Where are you going, Ada? To the chemical plant. I have a feeling that's where I'll find John. Ada! Wait! Hey! Leon, are you still there? We're leaving. Are you crazy? The streets are still crawling with zombies. 
It'll be all right, trust me. We found a way to the sewer. Follow us later. Claire! Claire! Wait, wait! Man, why doesn't anyone ever listen to me? God, Paul Haddad was really great at just shouting characters' names. Ada! Ben! Also, one thing that I never really thought of... Uh, in this game specifically, but I only thought of it because of the remake, is that Leon technically, like, sees Sherry. He doesn't really meet her, but he definitely is aware of her presence before the end of the game, so that you don't get that really awkward cutscene at the end of Resident Evil 2 Remake, where Claire's like, Leon, this is, this is Sherry, and Leon just goes, okay. It's like, what? That's your response? He's like, oh, cool, someone else made it out. He's just like, okay. That is the weirdest part of that entire game. It, that that cutscene always makes me laugh. Rem it always reminds me of that, um... Was that a vine? Was that how old that video was? That it was a vine? Where the lady pans the camera and the guy is just standing there and he goes, okay. So here we go, we got a, a brand new boss battle with William Birkin. This is, I think, a, a way more interesting boss battle than the one that Claire gets. Which is that, like, like the, the G-mutant, the G-creature that she fights, the big, like, penis thing that she fights after it bursts out of irons. I think William Birkin Phase 1 is definitely way more interesting than than the one that Claire gets, like, halfway through her story. Of course, we were able to take it out pretty easily with the, uh, rocket launcher. Ada! What was that all about? Running off like that was reckless and stupid! Those zombies are everywhere! Not to mention that thing that got Ben. I was there, Leon. I know. Look, Ada. As an officer, it's my job to look out for you. But we're not going to get through this alive if we don't work together. Okay? All right. We'll do this your way, for now. Okay, Ada, just wait for me as I, you know, figure out where I can drop down. I'm not just walking for no reason. Please just ignore that. At least Ada doesn't get sucked into a sewer drain in this, in this uh, playthrough. Like Sherry does, which I always thought was very funny. You can pick up some herbs here, make sure you don't get poisoned, but... Hopefully we'll be killing the spiders quick enough that they won't be poisoning us. I really like this part. I think this part down here in the sewers is a little bit better in Leon's than it is in Claire's. I just, I like playing this part a little bit better as Leon. If I could pick up this damn note, that is. And I think it's the same note, so I don't even think I needed to do this. Yeah, I don't think I needed to actually, uh, touch this. I'd love to be the guy, I think I've said this a bunch of times, but I'd love to be the guy that works on a video game that just names all the characters. I would just have fun names. Leon, that woman was... I have to talk to her. So, now we're Ada again. He has lost consciousness. The wound does not seem to be mortal. 
this part yeah. is definitely way more interesting than than her first playable section. It's also, I think, a little bit more interesting than when you play as Sherry in Claire's story the second time, where she's like crawling through the vent and everything. It's basically the same area. Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure Ada and Sherry share both of their playable sections in each story. Yeah, this is where Sherry goes through too. I just think it's a little bit more interesting as Ada because she's faster. She actually has a way to defend herself. And I just think uh, Ada's a way more interesting character than Sherry is. Don't move. You're the one who's with that cop, if I'm not mistaken. Identify yourself. Ada? Ada Wong? Ada Wong? I've heard that name before. Now I remember. One of the men from Chicago who came to assist the T-Virus research used his girlfriend's name as his password. Ada and John, I believe. How did you know? Who are you? Annette Birkin. My husband is the man responsible for the creation of the T-Virus. William Birkin. What? John's dead. He became one of those zombies. My condolences. And although I regret this, you will be joining him shortly. I won't let anyone take the G-Virus away from me. G-Virus? It's capable of creating the ultimate bioweapon. Its potential is even greater than that of the T-Virus. Then that must mean the creature in the police department is... Precisely... My husband, William. And it's all Umbrella's fault. None of this would have happened if they hadn't tried to steal his research away from him. Where did you get that pendant? It looks exactly like the one I gave Sherry. She dropped it. I've been holding on to it for her. Liar! Give it back to me! <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Interesting. Don't know why she decided to check that now, but... Hey, that's useful. I gotta say... PS1 blocky polygonal graphics... Way better than what we have now. Games looked a lot more interesting back then. And I love how because the, there's nothing dangerous happening, that there's no alligator, she's not infected. Like, Sherry, like, collapses there. Ada's just like, okay, I'm gonna stand here and wait for Leon now. Which I think is quite funny. But yeah, anyway. I don't know. I just think a game look like this looks a thousand times more interesting than, like... I don't know, The Last of Us Part 2, or Horizon Zero Dawn, or something like that. It, it looks so much more interesting. And I wish we could return to this aesthetic of games. There are, like, some indie games out there that, that replicate, like, this, this look. There's a game that came out pretty recently. I don't remember what it's called, but it looks really interesting. It looks like it's based on the, uh... Mega Man Legends, like, art style, which is, I mean, one of the best-looking games still. That's another one that I don't know how Capcom hasn't... There are so many games that I don't understand what Capcom hasn't remastered. The original Resident Evil games, the classic ones, I don't know how they haven't done that. That seems like that would make them a lot of money. And then there's Beautiful Joe, which I guarantee... Beautiful Joe 1 and 2 would look gorgeous remastered. You wouldn't even have to do much. Just remaster the game. And I guarantee Beautiful Joe 1 and 2 look beautiful still. And then Mega Man Legends 1 and 2. And then the Misadventures of Tron Bon. I don't understand how those games have never been remastered. I guarantee 
they look breathtaking still because they all have such striking art styles. Like, I can pop this game, I can pop Mega Man Legends into my PS2, and it still looks great. So if they were to remaster that, I guarantee that would look fantastic. And then, hey, that can gauge support on whether or not they want to try Mega Man Legends 3 again. For as many good decisions, for like every five good decisions that Capcom makes, they like, don't make another good decision. Or they just make a bad decision. It's weird. Capcom's my favorite company in, in games. I think that should be pretty clear by now. But they still make some pretty strange decisions sometimes. Ada! Why is she just standing there? It's so awkward. Leon. <sighs> this bullet wound isn't making things any easier. Quiet, Leon. I'll patch you up. That's two I owe you. Don't mention it. I just found out. John's dead. What? Never mind. Let's just get out of here. The sooner the better. And away we go. So now we got Ada with us. Unlike Sherry, we don't have to wait. You know, we don't have to wait for her. Worry about her falling behind because she's not a child. She won't get lost. So if you don't see Ada on screen, don't worry about it. She's not going to sit in the fetal position and, and worry about, you know, oh, I can't find Leon. So again, this part is way better as Leon than it was as Sherry. And I would say this part, more specifically, is what the Resident Evil 2 remake version of, uh, the, you know, the section where you play as Ada is based on. You got the fans that you gotta turn off, although she's got the, like, uh, like, Batman gadget that she uses instead of using the panel. It, it's kind of like a combination of both parts where you play as Ada, I would say, is kind of what the, the remake does a little bit. I'm gonna go down the damn ladder, that's why I'm looking at it. I'm not just looking at this ladder because I think it's pretty. So let's get the hey -o heck out of here. Just like with, uh, with Claire and Sherry, they have repopulated this area with some, some zomboids. There's some puking guys. That's puking Perry, that's what I call him. That's his official name, Peek and Perry, and then you've got a uh, spindly, uh, can't think of a name that starts with an S for some reason, Simon, Spindly Simon is the name of the spider, it's his official in-canon, in-universe name. So we are already done with the sewers, we are ready to get the hell out of here. I love how Ada turned around and like looked at the camera as I was climbing up there for some reason. Like that was very bizarre. That seemed like a comedy moment. Like it was just too perfect. This is another nice little bit of continuity that since Claire has already taken this uh, tram car. We have to call it back, which I like. Again, some of the, the nice little details in the A-B scenarios really just make it feel a little bit more real. And like they're actually happening back to back. There are some missteps, like some things that Claire and Leon both have to do. Even though it doesn't really make sense. But s some of these things really go the extra mile and show that it, you know, they're both happening.
So this isn't really all that bad, especially since we've got the infinite ammo. Just keep shooting William's arms as they come through. There's a little bit of a tell when they're about to, you know, which hole he's going to use. I don't think this is damage based, because I think if this was damage based, this would probably already be over. We just gotta sit here and wait for the dang train to get where it's going. And this is one of those things where I'm where I'm talking about how, you know, Claire and, and Leon both have to do this. Kinda silly. Doesn't really make sense, but whatever. This key is actually gonna be important, I think? Or maybe I grabbed that for no reason. I think it was it was more important as Claire. I might not actually ever use that key. We'll see. We shall see. At least we're back in this part of the game that has the absolutely incredible music. Although I don't think we're gonna be here for too long, so we're not gonna really get to hear the song a whole ton, which is a shame. Again, Resident Evil 2 Remake can't even comprehend how good the soundtrack was in the original. Cannot do it. Ooh, two and one. Did you like that double kill, Ada? Paula Dodd's voice is very difficult to do an impression of. Because he's, like, just some guy, which is maybe why he's, like, perfect for for Leon in this game. We finally arrived. There must be something hidden here. So once again, we got a ton of stuff done in this video. Really quite incredible. So we're going to go ahead and end it here, because I don't really know how much more stuff this video can take. So I'm going to go ahead and see you uh, in the next one.